There we go. Boom. Thank hey, you, Eric. Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? Ethan. Not my first rodeo. Yeah, well, it's definitely mine. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Ethan here from V100 in Wichita, Kansas State, in Trust Bank Arena. Got uh, the master, Eric Bass, Ooh, next to me. Master. Well, right. I mean. I'll take it. I'm out. You, know. you did produ- produce the new Shinedown record. I did. I did. So I'll, I'll call you the master. That's how we'll refer, <laughs> refer All right. to I'll take it. All right. So we are in Wichita tonight on the Attention, Attention World Tour. How is the tour going so far, man? It is uh, almost every show sold out. That's how it's going. So uh, it's been uh, it's been very humbling, man, to, uh, first of all, extremely enjoyable because we're out with our friends in Asking Alexandria and Papa Roach. And, and despite what bands will m- usually tell you, oh, we're having a great time. We love those guys and whatever about other bands. It's there's certain bands you don't get along with, you know, and mm-hmm. but this is the, the opposite of that. These are, are um, some of my some of my favorite people in the business. For sure. And and uh, we have great camaraderie with all the bands, and and um, you know we all have a genuine respect and love for each other, which is awesome. So we're having a great time, and I think it, I think that 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 permeates the show. I mean, every, all the bands are just you know in a great place and 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 you know the, the all three bands have really really great records out too i mean the, the new pop roach record and asking alexandria's record are two of my favorites and um so we're all just you know we're having a great time and like i said and that that leads to sell out shows and um and we, you know we're bringing a we, we, we have huge production some of the oh, some yeah. of the biggest production we brought and uh um we have great reviews of the shows and everything so uh i don't think things could be uh could be much better Definitely. And you mentioned your records out. You guys uh, put out Attention, Attention almost a year ago. Got a couple months until we hit the year mark. How has the reaction to that been since its release? Phenomenal, man. And, and like once again, humbling. I mean, it, it, you, you feel like when you're working on a record like this, like like Attention, Attention, Brent and I were, we were even, even when we were writing it, we were looking at each other going, thinking we had something pretty special. <laughs> and, um, you know, because usually you kind of, you always, you know, you, anything you're ever working on, any record, you always know you have good songs, but, but you know, th- this one seemed like a little more, like it had a little more glue to it, it had a little more stuff, you know, and and um, we, we had this special feeling about it while we were writing it, and um, and then when we were when we were making it, we we kind of knew it was, we were, and we were hoping the reaction was going to be what it, what it has been, which is, uh, you know, the the fans really really dig it, and uh, to me that's the only the only. The only thought in my head while I was making the record was was not fan service at all because I think that that's kind of a bad term, but mm. but just really making putting all the love and 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 work into it that we could to to uh, to give our fans something really really special that that I I thought they would love and you know you never know when you when you throw the bird out of the nest man you never know what's going to happen <laughs> if it's going to it's going to die a horrible death at the bottom of the tree or is it going to fly you know so. Um, I th- I don't think it died a horrible death, so we're good. I, I doubt it. Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> uh, so we mentioned earlier that you did something a little unconventional with this record, something that most bands don't do, is you produced the whole album. What was that experience like? Well, I had done individual songs before. Mm-hmm. I'd done like, Cut the Cord and Diamond Eyes, and I did our iTunes sessions, our acoustic iTunes sessions we did, and a couple other things for some soundtracks, um, but never a full record. And I, I, I was... Um, I'm a giant hypocrite because I always said that I, that uh, bands should ever produce themselves, <laughs> uh, because the the opinion of a of a producer is really important, an outside ear. Um, and uh, bands have a tendency to turn into spaceships and stuff when they produce themselves. You know, <laughs> like they they get they get too. I've, I've, sometimes bands can get too self serving, and it becomes about making some musical statement, you know, or something, and you forget about what got you where you are and. And so I was very cognizant of those things when while, while making it. So um, I was never nervous. The guys had my back. We had a great time. The label had my back. There was never any intrusion, interference, anything like that. Um, you know, we were really, really fortunate to be able to just kind of go away and and make attention, attention, and 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 really pour our whole selves into it. Brent and I were talking yesterday on the bus about how this is the first record that he's ever written there's not a single lyric he would change on it and this is the first record i've ever made myself where there is one thing i would change and it's such a minor it's a mixed thing it's a minor thing you know and uh very minor um you know i uh which is no excuse because i ended up mixing the record too i probably (laughs) just gone back and fixed that right but i didn't think it was you know anyway um but uh yeah man i mean it's uh it was it was a labor of love i didn't take a single day off from 
September 18th till January 22nd, work Christmas Day, work New Year's Day. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, anything worth doing, right, is, is, worth, sure. worth, is worth going all the way for. So um, it was... Uh, it was awesome, and now I've I've given myself panic attacks thinking about having to make another one, maybe. But cause we're, you know, we're we're a good year off from even writing, but you know, still it's like, oh my god, I'm gonna do this again at some point, you know? Yeah. Now, one of the big singles from the record that's gotten a lot of really positive attention uh, has been "Get Up," mm -hmm. and I know that's a very personal song for you. Can you tell me a little bit about how that song came to be? Yeah, I had the uh, I had the music and melody for that on my phone, I actually stumbled across it the other day. I had it on there since about 2016. And I'll, sa I'll save things. I, I'm constantly recording ideas, like just melodies and music stuff. You know, if I'm in the studio and I sit down at the piano or, or pick up a guitar and have something that, that sounds like it might be something for Shine Down, I have a certain folder I put all that stuff in. And, and that was in there. And um, it was one that I was really excited about working on, you know, just melodically. You know, I thought it was pretty good. Um, but Brent and I started putting that song together, and and uh, the lyrics didn't come very quickly. And it was we're four or five days into lyrics, and usually we're done writing lyrics for a song in two or three days. Um, but four or five days later, and you know he hadn't the, the the spark of the idea has to come from Brent usually for him to 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 uh, he's got he's got to sing it, he's got to deliver it, you know. So he'll come up with the uh, the initial idea, and then you know I basically you know. Start throwing throwing things into the pot. You know, once that idea is there lyrically, but the idea, the seed has to come from him. And, and he was like, "I just don't have anything. I don't have anything." So I was at the point of like, well, "Let's just move on to something else. Let's write something else." And he was like, "Well, hang on. I actually do sort of have something." And, and it was super personal. He didn't. He he was he'd been so, he'd been apprehensive to bring it to me because it was about myself and, and my depression issues and and anxiety and the, you know how sometimes I won't leave the house and and uh, you know for days and uh, and I just have a really really hard time and. Uh, so uh, he he sang me the, the the verse. He had verse half a pre-chorus, and we had the get up get up thing from just shooting melodies around with each other when 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 it came to the chorus when we were writing it, just sitting at the piano, and we always knew that was going to be there. We didn't know what it meant, and uh, he sang me this this thing, you know, and he's like, I wrote this about you, and, and it was very sweet, and uh, so. That actually made it okay to write the rest of the record because we, we, we weren't too far into writing at that point. And uh, it's like, well, let's just put all of our garbage out there, you know, <laughs> and all of our issues. And, and, and we, we always write from, from a personal place. We always write what we know. But you'll sometimes project that onto other characters or whatever, you know, when you're writing. You're not, Self-ownership is a hard thing when it comes to, to demons. So... Um, we just decided to kind of take the plunge and really go down that road of we're going to tell people this is what we're talking about. You yeah. Know? Whereas in the past, maybe we didn't. You know? So um, it uh, Get Up was a, it's a very, very special song, man. And it, is, it has shown itself to be um, extremely special to a lot of people. And you, know, you, you never know when you're writing a song. You, know, so you have great feelings when you're writing a record, you know, like I said. But when it comes to a song, very rarely do you know and th that you've got something really, really that's going to reach people and touch people. And I did. I'm not going to sit and pretend like I knew that was what the, that's what the song was going to be. Um, but man, it has really got legs, man, and it won't stop. And uh, it just uh, continues to surprise us. And and uh, it's doing its job. You know, I, I, I'm a firm believer that music is is meant to to help people and to heal people. And whether it's you're healing yourself through you know, in a mosh pit or you're healing yourself, <laughs> you know, sitting in your car listening to get up, you know, I've, I've done, I've done both things, you know, it, music, music is a healing thing. And so to, uh, to, to uh, have written something that's helping people with, with their issues by bringing to light my issues um, is, uh, it's pretty amazing, man, you know, I have to say. So uh, and that's what this band is about. That's what we're built for. You know, we're, we're built to help people and to, uh, through, through rock and roll music, you know? What advice would you give to people, you know, that are struggling with uh, depression, anxiety, any number of things, you know? Um, I'm sure it's really difficult for you on the road, um, you know, being away from home and everything, but what It, it advice? is, you know, the, 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 the thing about depression and anxiety is it's, it's, it doesn't discriminate. Um, 
you know, that's why I, I get on my Instagram sometimes and, and I'll, I'll make posts about it. I'm feeling a certain way. I want people to know that, that I've got the best job in the world, man. I've got, I've got a great wife. I've got a, a fantastic existence. I've got money in the bank. Um, doesn't matter. You know, it's, it, it, will, it will bring you down. And uh, I want people to know that they're not alone, you know. Um, the advice part of it is difficult because I have, in, in, in talking with so many people over the past year, and, and prior to, but more so since this song came out, um, about what they go through. It's so different for everybody. Each person feels it a different way, has different, different symptoms. Um, you know, for me, it's... Uh, I really, really, I'm, I'm continuing to do this on a daily basis is to become more comfortable with who I am. And that, that gives me sort of an anchor to, uh, to, uh, to, to deal with it. Um, exercise helps me a lot. You know, I, I go to the gym or I go for a run or something like that and I always feel better. Um, but you have to respect it. You know, it's always going to be there. Um, you know, I've heard stories of people say they wake up one day and it's gone, you know, and... I'm waiting on it, you know. I'm waiting on it, but uh, you know, I, here's the thing, man. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't mope around. That's that's another thing too, because you can, you can exacerbate it by, you know, just waking up and knowing you have it, and then going, well, I'm, there's no way I can I can get above it. Yeah. Um, I try to wake up every day with a smile on my face, and some days it I win, and some days it wins, you know. <laughs> but uh, but I try not to exacerbate it. I try not to. To, uh, to, to make it worse than it is, than it already is. Um, if you're having a good day, for God's sakes, enjoy it, man. Get out and, and enjoy the feeling. I, I, I have those days where I'm like, I, t I tell myself, you're having a good day, enjoy it. Enjoy this feeling you have right now. And uh, that can be extremely therapeutic and helpful too because it, it gives you something to, gives you a gauge, it gives you a, uh, something to kind of harken back to if you're having a rough day because you know that it's not always gonna be the way it is. You know, you're not always going to be down. You're going to have good days and bad days, but you have to really grab onto those good days and make the most of them. So, definitely. Well, hey, um, before I let you go, yeah, I wanna know a couple more things real quick. Hey, What's your uh, favorite song that you guys perform live? Favorite song to perform live right now or just in general? But right now, I know it probably changes every night. <laughs> no, no, right now, right now, Amaryllis is fun, man. We hadn't played that song in a long time. We're playing it on this tour, and uh, I've always enjoyed that one. Um, the, there's something about the way that the, the guitar sounds in the beginning, the acoustic guitar. And I remember when we were recording that, you know, there were two of us in a room with two guitars, and and we played simultaneously in two different tunings, and then we switched places, and then 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 I played one tuning, and Zach played the other tuning, and and it was just a super lush sounding. I just love the way his guitar sounded in the beginning of that song. So. Um, it's just uh, it's a nice break in the show because we we've you know when they're heavy songs man we're running around like we're jumping and it's 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 high cardio right and it, a lot of people don't think about this but you know you're you're winded and you're trying to sing and you know it's 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 a physical effort and it's nice to get a song like that where it's just like ah take a deep breath and I'm just gonna play the song you know Definitely. And, and I just I love the vibe of that song man it really uh, I've always I've always enjoyed playing that song so that right now that's probably my favorite. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you very much. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Everybody, Eric Bash of the band Shine Down. Check them out on tour. They'll be in Kansas City coming up in May, and then a couple days later, uh, headlining Rocklahoma. So we'll see you guys then. Appreciate hey, it. Thanks so much.